and dereference box are actually exploitable, or at least some of them. Um, proof of that is, for example, uh, the previous jailbreaks. Uh, most of them uh, all used uh, kernel box that, uh, in the end, dereferenced code um, that was already in memory because of the, the user had loaded it. Uh, this kind of attack is not possible on OS X, but on iOS. And here on iOS, okay, root getting root is a, is a good, nice start, but in the end, it doesn't get you uh, far because uh, in iOS, everything is sandboxed, and um, also you have the code signing protection. So uh, just having root is not enough. You always need some kind of memory corruption in the kernel or some kernel code execution to actually disable these protection in kernel land. And therefore, also um, exploits that are only triggerable as root are still very valuable. Okay, so I always speak about the kernel, so what is the kernel? How do I get the kernel? And um, basically the kernel is just like a six megabyte big file uh, that you can find on your iPhone or I iPad and it's stored in system library cages com Apple kernel cages. Um, on a jailbroken iPhone you can just uh, copy it from here or, which, which is easier, you can just download one of the firmware updates and uh, the firmware updates are just like zip files and you can unzip them and um, when you unzip them you see this kind of directory listing and you see there are three kernel cages here and basically um, it's still a mystery to me why uh, Apple puts three kernel cages in there because every device has its own firmware image so it doesn't make sense to have three different kernel cages here because all three different kernel cages are for different devices so the N90 is the uh, iPhone 4 the um, K48 is the iPad 1 and the N81 is the uh, iPod 4 so Basically, uh, these are three different kernels for three different devices, and actually only one would be needed. So you can grab this, this binary, and when you like use a hex dump on it, you will see that it's very cryptic. And um, basically, uh, the first four bytes tell you that it's a so-called IMG3 file. Uh, a lot of the files for the iPhone are IMG3, and this is basically a uh, some, some archive format or some wrapper format, uh, which can be encrypted, most of the time it is encrypted, and um, you can unpack and decrypt it with a tool like Xpone tool. However, uh, you need the key for that, and um, the easy way is to get the key from the internet. Just download it from uh, the iPhone wiki or look into Red Snow, there's a uh, fire keys or pdisk. Uh, extract it from there. Uh, but in reality, getting this key is a lot harder because uh, the key is actually stored inside the file in a KBAC tag. Mm -hmm. But the KBAC tag is encrypted with the device key and you can only decrypt it on the device. So if you want the key for an iPad 1, you have to put it on the iPad 1, this file, and decrypt uh, the KBAC. And to actually decrypt it, you already need a uh, kernel or boot ROM access because otherwise you don't have access to the key. <coughs> and it's not possible to extract the secret key from the, from the device, so you cannot do it on your, on your computer. But uh, you don't need to do that, because every time there's a new version, <coughs> there will be some uh, jailbreakers that will provide you with the key. Okay, when you, when you unpack that, you will see that basically this uh, is just um, Macho binary, an ARM version 7 Macho binary, and all your normal Macho tools like uh, yeah, O-Tool, Macho View, or also IDA, they will just work with them out of the box because it's just like a normal binary. For example, when you look at this with Macho View, you will see that it actually contains a lot of sections. Um, some of them are like standard text sections like text, C string, cons, or data. And some of them have very descriptive names like constructor or destructor. These are basically lists of constructors and destructors. And prelink uh, 
text and prelink info are prelinked um, kernel extensions and some XML description of the kernel extensions. Oh, another uh, interesting thing is that the sysctl set uh, section is actually a list of pointers to uh, all the sysctl values the kernel supports. So, okay, now you have extracted the binding and now the question how can you analyze it? The first thing you will do is you will load it into IDA and um, IDA can load it because it's normal ARM um, version, version 7 binary and it will start its auto analysis and when the auto analysis is finished you will see that IDA completely failed to analyze it. Um, you can see there's the IDA uh, bar down there Normally, it should be completely blue, so that it could analyze a file. But you see there are a lot of um, missing things that were, that were not analyzed. There are some red lines that basically say there were code, but it was not in functions. So um, when you look at it manually, you'll see that either found a lot of code that is actually not code, but data. So it just disassembled data. And some data is actually code. So um, it's not really good. And I don't really need your help. The first thing you can do is you can, uh, yeah, go to all these sections that contain uh, pointer lists and um, create a little IDA Python script that we just tell IDA these are pointers, and uh, this will help IDA to to actually load the binary in a better way. However, it only helps a little bit. What's better is you look at the text section. When you look at this section, you will see that it looks very lot, a very lot like an, an own macro file. And when you look at it in more detail, you will see that actually this section contains more than 130 macro files. And of course, either cannot deal with files inside files. Uh, so you have to help it again, and you have to write an either Python script to do that. And I did that. And all the scripts I mentioned, you can download, uh, download later. I will show you the link at the end of the slides. Yeah, so basically the script uh, just scans the, this section for uh, all the macro files. And uh, because these are like normal macro files, they contain sections and segments. And uh, to tell IDA about it, the um, script will create sections inside IDA and will mark all these uh, correctly with like they are some code or not and it will handle all the destruct and constructor sections, like tell I that these are just pointers, and it will also pass the um, kmod info, which is an info in every kernel driver that tells you what's the name and uh, yeah, what's the version of the driver, and in the end, we'll just like drop that in the, into an SQLite database and we'll show you a list of, the, of these extensions. Now, when you run the script, it looks like this. You can see, uh, these are just like, uh, in this case, there's 134 uh, macro files inside the macro file. And you can see that the drivers are actually um, yeah, quite descriptive. They have quite descriptive names, like uh, you have the driver for the onboard serial, um, for the file system. Yeah. And there are some others, like for the basement and so on. So, so basically, uh, you know where in the binary is what driver, and if you're interested in some kind of hardware, you can just go to this uh, address and uh, yeah, look at this driver and use it. So when, when you did all this, you will see that uh, IDA already performed a lot better, so now this looks completely different. Uh, however, there's still a lot of functions that are uh, not recognized, so there's code outside of functions. And again, you have to write a script that will scan all the code. And uh, if, the, if the code is also a function, it tries to make it a function. And you will see that it will fail because there's some corner cases you have to do uh, manually. But um, in the end, you have like a, a very tiny IDA base that um, is actually usable. The next thing you will see inside the, the binary is that. Um, iOS drivers and also Mac OS drivers, uh, OS X drivers, are written in some kind of C++. 
So you find all the classes and the method tables in, inside the binary. And this is an example for the um, IO service object. And in this case, it even comes with symbols because it's uh, one of the main, some main um, classes inside the main kernel. And of course, they have to come with uh, symbols because otherwise the drivers could not like use them. However, most of the classes have no symbols because they're all in the 134 uh, drivers. And for them, you don't have symbols. And so you have no idea what the objects are actually for. But there's one handy thing in iOS or in OS X in general that all the, uh, all the classes from the drivers actually have to have a so-called meta class. And the meta class is the descriptor, descriptor class of the original class for the original class. And when you look at this code, 